Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. If it looks a little bit like uh, I'm an outlaw, if I look a little like an outlaw, it's because we're, we've are we been filming uh, our Rapture movie, and uh, I kind of step into that role somewhat. And I, it, it might also fit the context of what I'm about to talk to you about here because I'm somewhat of an outlaw uh, in the uh, Christian sense. Uh, not that I don't uh, uh, love the law of God, not that I don't uh, keep His commandments, not that I don't that I have something against the law. The law is holy and righteous and good. But I'm going to take a slight departure from our study uh, in Romans here to address the subject that I think may be may be of, of some interest to some of our viewers because I received a number of emails here recently concerning the subject in, uh, of which I'm going to talk about. So I won't keep you long. This is more of a personal uh, note of encouragement. Many of you out there who have followed this channel, you've expressed concerns about how isolated uh, a position of uh, a position that this grace teaching makes you. Uh, as it regards the world religious system as a whole, mainstream, modern, conservative, evangelicalism, uh, the religious system based on human merit. That if you follow this channel, you know that that's, that's not what this ministry is based on. That perhaps uh, you were not actually born again uh, until grace freed you from the heavy burden the yoke of slavery, of law keeping as a rule of life. You know, it could be that you are still viewing redemption and salvation as synonymous terms, and I've spoken a lot uh, on that distinction. More than likely, you were always redeemed and have since come to be saved, that is, delivered. Because all redeemed were chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world. Folks, a, 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 some particular extent or some particular knowledge of truth is not, is not a prerequisite for being born again. In fact, I've, I've mentioned this on occasion. I firmly believe that there are a lot of stupid Christians around. Uh, more so ever, uh, I think, now today than ever before. So more than likely, you were always redeemed, and you've since come to be delivered. And you find this newfound deliverance exciting, amazing, because you were redeemed, chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world. Redemption, apart from uh, real time, apart from your time, regeneration, which occurred in real time, and salvation also uh, in time but many who are redeemed will never be delivered or saved as you may be at the current time during the current span of their lives in the fullest sense of the term because they lived they walked they served and they worshiped according to the law the flesh their entire lives yet even they will be finally delivered in the ultimate sense, if they are born again. What I expect is that y'all were most definitely always his or, or you would have uh, no interest. You, you wouldn't have any interest or desire toward God or the things of God. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. We know that from 1 Corinthians 2.14. Your journey through life, unaware of the liberating grace truth that, that you, you now possess, was actually purposed by our sovereign God. I know that's a hard thing to grasp hold of, but he does work all things according to the counsel of his own will. Ephesians 1.11, in whom also we have obtained an, an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of, of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. 
There's never been a moment in your life in which God hasn't directed and guided your footsteps and all that for a purpose. So perhaps now you are being saved, actually saved, delivered from sin, law, the guilt, the fear of condemnation, the fear of death, etc., etc. You've grown to discover your true identity in Christ. And you find this amazing because most of the Christians probably that, that you meet, most of the Christians that surround you, seem to have a lack of a serious lack of understanding as it regards their identity in Christ for this reason I endure all things for the sake of the elect so that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory 2 Timothy 2:10 I want you to note that it is the elect that are in need of salvation or deliverance in this verse Grammar is important, folks. The subjunctive mood of the word may attain, maybe they will, maybe they won't, actually proves that Paul is not speaking of salvation in the sense of redemption here, but deliverance. Whereas the indicative mood in the Greek, the grammar, is the mood of certainty. The subjunctive mood is the mood of uncertainty, and we see that here in this verse, it's in the mood of uncertainty. It's the subjunctive mood. May attain. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. And it's talking about ongoing deliverance. Salvation in the progressive sense. All the opposition, all the feeling of isolation, the rejection, etc., is the result, not the cause, of your spiritual condition. Non-believers as well as believers within the world religious system that carries the banner of Christianity are unaware of the fact that they are the ones, they are the ones who are persecuting their fellow brethren. You never hear this talked about, but this is the fact. And this persecution does not have to appear as a face-to-face -face confrontation, although it sometimes does. The faith in Christ alone that we maintain will suffer rejection at the hand of that religious system which elevates man and pushes down Christ. And believe me, they labor intensively, doing this with tremendous zeal and enthusiasm for the sake of that religious system thinking that they are doing God's service. Personally speaking, I feel like my brethren felt in the Word of God. I read verses and, and all the time, and I can, I can relate to that. I relate to their suffering, as well as to our Lord's suffering of rejection at the hands of men. God, folks, He's so designed Scripture in such a way that we cannot help but relate to those who have gone before us who, who stood strong in the faith. A religion that elevates self above Christ cannot know what it means to suffer for the sake of Christ. A religion whose primary focus is on self, not Christ, in the Christian life, I remind you, as Paul says, it's not I but Christ, cannot know what it means to suffer for the sake of Christ. Christ stood before the religious system of his time, persecuted and condemned by people who were called by his name. Did you hear that? A religious system steeped in legalism that failed to recognize that the one whom that they were persecuting stood before them as the very fulfillment of the law which they could not keep. Hello. And that his heart, the heart of our Lord, was for them, not against them, for them, God's very own people, a chosen people whom God set aside because of their unbelief were they were destined to wander in the wilderness for an entire generation. 
he remaining faithful in their lives despite their failure to place their trust in him regarding all things. Folks, stop and think about it for just a moment. Look at mainstream, modern, conservative, evangelicalism and ask yourself, where are those who are persecuting it? Jesus told his disciples it would be the world religious system that would hate them. Not the world, non-believing, I don't care about God world. That would persecute them, even to the point of putting them to death. Any religious system that preaches a synergistic gospel, so-called Christian or otherwise, is not a theological system suffering for the sake of Christ. But it will be the grace of God in your life that will do just that. Why? Why? Because it is the grace of God that offends man's sense of self-value and self-worth and self-dignity. It is the sovereignty of God that undermines the autonomy of law teachers regardless of how effective they appear to be. You have to realize that there are multitudes, multitudes of actual Christians who exist within a sphere of false peace and false comfort. This is why our Lord told his disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. John 14, 27. We've come a long way since I began uh, teaching in the epistle to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 1. And in our study through Ephesians and, and now Romans, and we are rapidly approaching the end of Romans, we've been introduced to a tremendous amount of blessings related to sound biblical doctrine, which will result in your suffering for Christ's sake if you embrace that doctrine as the truth. All purposed by God so that your faith will be strengthened and settled, resting in Him, not yourself, but in Him as your source of life, rather than what you formerly did, which was trust in yourself. Where, you, where that you then understand what it really means to set your affection on things above, that's Christ, not on things below, sin, self, the law, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God, Colossians chapter 3. I received the following email from a viewer. They wrote, All that we have been learning makes me and my wife look backwards wondering if we really were saved when we made professions back in the 60s. If we were truly saved or delivered at that time when we asked Christ into our lives, uh, I mean, would that have been under false pretenses because we were putting our faith in what we did? We can see God blessing our lives as well as our family over the past 50 years, which makes us sense that He has been with us in spite of our lack of understanding the real truth. We understand now and believe that we were chosen before the foundation of the world and redeemed at the cross through Jesus Christ. But were we not really saved and delivered when the true light of the gospel was revealed to us within the last year? Now we question everything we hear at church. We can't take the way scripture is being so persecuted week after week. We share with people our newfound belief and love for Christ that comes when you have the real truth and it seems like it goes in one ear and out the other. But there are some where it does stick in there a little just wondering if you have ever run across someone who thinks like me. And my answer to that is all the time. This is, this is what we're looking at. We're looking at Christians who never really understood these marvelous truths before, and now that they do, they're being delivered. But they, they were always, they had always been redeemed. They had always been God's people, folks. 
is it really all that hard to believe that the majority, not the minority, but the majority of a religious system called Christianity dresses up week after week, feeling content and finding comfort even in going through the motions, tolerating the rituals, enduring all the trite and, and repetitious uh, cliches so that they will maintain some degree of comfort in the idea that they're doing everything, they're doing something right, they're doing everything that God expects of them in order to merit a love that they really haven't yet come to fully realize. To merit a peace that they haven't really ever known, because what they are living is all that they have ever known, surrounded by a sense of protection by so many others of like mind, the only comfort zone that they've ever known, who wouldn't dream of being elsewhere, who, who would not step foot inside a mosque or a monastery or a synagogue. It's not that they're in the wrong place, folks. They know that, they know that if nothing else. It's not that they are not being fed. They are. But if they are his, they are sheep not being fed the rich pasture of truth that God has given us in his word. I wonder if many of us have ever really spent time meditating on the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down, lie down in green pastures, green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, only its shadow, I will fear no evil, for Thou art with me, Thy rod and Thy staff. Both, they comfort me. And thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I love you all. I truly do. Blessings and peace as we continue to grow in grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ our Lord. Till next time, this is Steve. Thanks for watching.